All righty. You ready? Sure. All right. So thank you for having us here, Bobby. Appreciate it. Yes. Made us some food we got here. I'm that was fat. a special surprise. I'm fat, dude. We gotta eat. <laughs> Appreciate you having us, man. Had so every time we come day. out to the pad, you guys have always treated us nice and you know very welcoming. Hell so yeah. Appreciate that. Just gotta, yeah. So we are in Bobby's shop right now. This is a new shop, right? Yeah, I mean, you guys, yeah. I mean, the last time we were here, you had the orange car and the two car garage, like yeah, like attached to the house garage. Yeah, <laughs> like things have changed. It's much nicer. I know you got like a little piece footer there now. Yeah. He was kind of young back oh. then. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you didn't have any hair on your little balls. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have my driver's license. I could, couldn't even drive a race car. You got a driver's license? I, I do now. That makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Talking shit at the driver's meeting the other night. What'd you say? He was all stressed out about that. Also, oh, like, man, you know, we don't get a bunch of time to do shit like that, like normal. Yeah. And I finally had a chance to. Well, all them little cocksuckers on, like, on Facebook, oh, you don't really street race, you're a TV queer, rah, rah, rah. you won't race unless the roads close down and it's in your favor. So I said, I'm driving me. And I said, all you little motherfuckers talking shit on Facebook, but I won't street race and I won't do this. I said, which one of y'all fuckers want to do it first? And nobody said shit. Yeah. Little For dude, right put here, it, this is that pad wars. This is the race that just happened right. this weekend. And the little dude put his head down. I said, I'm talking about you, motherfucker. Like, you was talking shit. Like, do you want to go first round? He just put his head down. So I take that as a no. And I'm all, I don't even remember his name. Um, I know his face, though. But of all people, a five-year-old little boy, well, maybe six or seven, but he goes, he said, Daddy, he said, you try it, Bobby. Said, That's what you want to do? He said, yeah. So Brian, Brian called me. Marble. Yeah, Brian called me out first round. Kind of weird, man. His son walked up there. He's like, oh, we're finna get gapped. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. I just... I, mean, I know Brian's shit works, man. That was my first look at the pad ever with that car on a small tire, so we tried him out and it worked in our favor. Yeah, I mean, you've been running that car on No Prep Kings this whole season, right? Majority of the season until a new car come out, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it ain't been on smiles long. Um, That's pretty impressive to take a car that is No Prep Kings capable and detune it for the street, and it's carbureted. What you got against carburetors? I'm just saying, <laughs> carburetors ain't the easy way. Look, not all of us are smart with a computer, bro. I'm, uh, I'm a dumbass, so if I could, you know, screwdriver it and whack out, I'm good. Yeah. But it takes a lot to switch that shit over to even get to look half ass decent on smalls. Yeah. Um, there's a three or four converter boxes over there. There's two center sections over there. I mean, shocks, the whole transmission, the whole converter. Oh, well, there's a little part of there, but like a center section i mean it's a lot of shit and yeah then, and you're not like these other guys that have five different cars for different scenarios i'm working on it. yeah i'm working on it. i'm trying to get three and a, well, two and a half right now oh, i see a new one back there right yes now. it's booty tank booty tank no it's called <laughs> <laughs> it's called stormtrooper we're gonna keep it the same name um, it's a roller right now but one day i'm gonna be as fast as time over here yeah so the show's transitioning to more of a streetcar thing and more of a small tire more relatable kind of deal are you happy with that oh that's my shit like i i i'll be honest with you when no prep kings first came around i was like this is gonna suck i thought big tires were d i mean i used to pick on kai about that all the time and scott they show up with a chad's car i'm like y'all some cars <laughs> and i said anybody go fast on big tires yeah. and then when i got on big tires i knew real quick like i was one of the dumb asses in the background didn't have a clue because big tires is a motherfucker yeah. It's it's way more complicated than smalls, and I know that sounds weird, but it's the God's honest truth. Um, big tires are having a 400 pound old lady, you gotta make it happy, and it's, a, it's hell. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just get that deep before you even get to it. <laughs> That's funny, man. So what's the what's the plans with the car behind you? I don't really know yet. I'm gonna do something. Like, in my heart, I wanna put a big block in it with a bunch of nitrous and a three speed. But in, for the heart of the show, it's something people can build at home. Yeah. Probably gonna do like a mod motor with a 10 speed and just cruise it around and probably a pro charge deal. That'd be cool. Yeah. I, re I really like seeing the more streetable stuff on the show and hopefully that gets good ratings. Yeah. The only thing I'm not looking forward to it is if I have something like that that I could just drive around, I'm not fucking mature enough for it. Yeah. So. I bet like the stop sign or red lights, I'll race my fucking self. I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean, so I'm, that's how I am with my dailies. I make a hit at least once a day in a 
I get my license back in March, and I'm probably ain't even gonna have them by then. How'd you lose it? That the blue car. I tried to run from the police with a two-gallon fuel cell. <laughs> Did they know who you were when they called? Oh you? hell yeah! <laughs> like we was testing, man, and we was on the highway over here, and I didn't really think nothing about it. I mean, I literally we was going to do a little cash days deal in Texas, and um, I said, well, "I got to find a Verge Road to test on." We'd never had that car on the street at all. So we done our burnout, and I seen a car coming like from the four way, and I'm like, "Oh, that's a cop." He come pull out, open door, and I let go of it. And I said, he ain't gonna catch me. The Maverick, you know, they used to have a fucking 10 gallon cell. I go a little ways. That yeah. two gallon runs the fuck out quick. I made it about four ish miles. And he come over and asked me if I was stupid and why the hell was I running? I said, man, I, as I was getting put in handcuffs, I told him straight up, I said, I said, you think you can do a car, make a car do that? <laughs> he said, well, no, I said, it's a really stupid one. Oh God. They don't really think, they don't look at that real good. Like they kind of frown on it, but I mean, it is what it is. I was already caught. Yeah. So well, then I got resistant for, they were putting the car in roll back and I was throwing a fit. I said, y'all gonna break my front end. And he just kept, Aww. I said, you take me out of these cuffs. I'll put it on the fucking roll back and I'll kick your ass. Well, that's one of the best things about you is that you are real. What you see is what you get. And you know, a lot of these guys aren't really about that life. No, like, man. I, I grew up watching a couple of these dudes and I watched them change and you know if you look back on YouTube or Facebook or even MySpace that's probably before this one was born um, I had MySpace yeah did you yeah when you 10 I had the I could change my favorite song on there and my Ooh, top 10 friends in the yeah. background oh yeah you could change your layout well, you were like 10 years old uh, yeah I was probably like in elementary you were still doing it on yourself weren't you he was born in like 2001 yeah. oh oh He's yeah. a baby. I I existed. I don't know that I was. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know what. It, I didn't know what was going on though. So I feel old as fuck now. But anyway, <laughs> what was I talking about? I don't know. I got off picking on time for a second. So do you think that you know you're obviously you're excited to start going back and doing this stuff? And what we were talking about was. I think you're talking about how uh, people have changed over time. Oh, yeah. You know, your buddies are maybe not, not I, your buddies, but they've changed over time. Or right. How racing has changed. And do you think shit's gone too far compared to how it all started? Yeah. I, yeah and no. But like I said, you can look back on social media. I'm the same dumb motherfucker I was 10 years ago, and I'm going to be that same dumb motherfucker 10 more years from now. Who gives a shit? I mean, I'm me. If you don't like it, fuck you. I'm sorry. But that's just how I feel about it. Yeah. But... The thing you're saying about people going too far, yeah, no, but you gotta look at this aspect. Everything evolves. Yeah. If somebody would have told me 10 years ago I'd run the, the orange car, or the old car, that caliber of a car on the street would go for anything, I'd say you're fucking crazy. Right, yeah. Until we started doing it. Mm -hmm. So, no, I mean, I think has it not become fun anymore when you're going that fast and you're spending so much money? Is it no longer fun? Oh, it's fun as fuck for like four seconds. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Um, the rest of the time, it's a job. You right. know what I mean? Like, you're going to laugh when I'm going to tell you. Like, it was no way, shape, or form beneficial for me to even come to the pad for pad wars with that caliber of a car. Because if I won the whole pot, I might would break even. Right. Because it costs per pass, and so you're but risking. It's crazy, it's man. Like, them motors only stay together for 40 runs. That's it. It don't matter if it's a part or if it's together. 40 runs is coming out. It's getting rods, pistons. At real time, it's getting a crank. It's getting sleeved. It's getting everything. Henson's still doing your motors right Oh, yeah. That's my buddy. He kind of, he's a good motor guy. I love Mike. He's yeah. A good dude. I know. He loves a lot of dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this year, I kind of overdid my welcome at his house. Uh, <laughs> oh god we was at no prep kings and he said what are you gonna do bob i said well i said what you think i'm gonna do he said you gonna fuck it up ain't you i said i'm probably gonna fuck it up i said i mean we really got a choice he goes i know i said new car's not done yet i said so we just gonna spray and pray he will call me for you so i do something stupid so i called him at 11 o'clock he said i'm sleeping i said what's 11 o'clock we're on the west coast he said what are you finna do i said i'm finna turn on about 4400 pounds per hour and i'm leave about 12 degrees in it he said, well, I'll see you in two days. He wasn't bullshitting. 
had my motherfucker like a torch and off of it. And I think the car and the motor stayed at his house more this year than it stayed in the trailer or at the races because, like, the a week or two I'd have it, I'd run the fucking shit out of it. I mean, it's 300 cubic inches down from the next one that's, you know, it's six, 700 horsepower down. So, I mean, I had to do what I had to do it. And I had to hurt it every round knowing I was probably going to lose anyway. That's crazy, man. So I, I pretty much I, I wore my welcome over there. Like I stayed at his house a good bit. Um, my rig stayed part of his house. I mean, thank God we had good people to get parts from. Cali has really went above and beyond. Gib Tech went above and beyond. Uh, GRP kind of left me out there, nuts hanging. I had to go buy a rise from another motor builder. Yeah. Had him in stock. Um, Total Seal. They it's kept, hard to get parts right now. Man. Oh my God, dude. We had. I literally called Total Seal. I said, I need this ring. He said, I'm out. I said, what are we going to do? He said, I don't know. He said, we can't get material. He said, give me a little bit. Dude called me back. He said, I got a customer that has X amount of sets. He said, call him. I thought I was calling like a motor builder or something. I called this dude, barely spoke any English. I said, I need some rings you got. I said, you know, so I'm told him to give you a call. He goes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He goes, how many do you need? I said, all of them. He goes, oh, fuck. He said, I only got 20. I'm like. That's fine. I said, I need, you know, eight sets. He said, no problem. I paid pounds some money, overnight on the mic, put it back together, and popped it in next weekend. Rings. Mm. Can't get rings. You can't get nothing now. Yeah, like, I was having trouble just getting sleeves for my small block Chevy. Dude. This year. I, I was trying to make it to make a cash days, but I could No matter what, I always found a roadblock. So I just stopped fighting, and I was like, I don't, I'm not going to go. Yeah. If, if you listen to that thing run close, you can hear the piston slap in it. Like, it's, it's wore the fuck out. And Mike keeps saying, he said, what you going to do? I said, man, I'm going to run until it comes apart. I said, I'm going to have fun with it. He goes, you know, it's going to be more expensive. I'm like, well, I mean, it happens. I mean, I can't get parts, but I'm not going to be down for six months waiting on parts. If it pops, I will be, but it is what it is. You got to keep racing. Yeah. You're under contract. Well, no, like this, like this past weekend, I mean, I had more fun doing that than I had a whole rest of the year. And I got number one on the list this year, and I can't really talk about what happened to regular stuff, but right. it's coming and people's going to see. But Good I stuff. Had, oh, yeah. Good oh, stuff yeah. coming. Yeah, you know, I'm a fucking duck, but whatever. <laughs> You're really not anymore, though. Yeah. I don't feel like people look at you that way. You've done a lot better in the last yeah. few years. Well, I put a sticker on the window of a new car. I made me take it off. It said, duck, duck, goose, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like it. It is what it is. Yeah, it was awesome seeing the car out there and seeing it do well. Know the yeah. pad this weekend. I didn't see any other uh, street outlaws guys there. Well, your brother Gary said it was slow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you race this weekend? Well, um, you had a whack off accident or something? Something like that. Well, I tore my ACL playing basketball. I could have drove, but since we just refreshed the car, and I just. I felt like I mean, he's never he's raced at the pad like five times and he has never won. He's been in the finals. Like I, w I really want him to get a win at the pad, and it's, it is his car at the end of the day. And when he doesn't have anything to race, I feel bad, so I let him drive it. And uh, it, it, and then I can film. Like if 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 I have to drive, I can't film, and he ain't gonna film. He can't help Allison out filming, so I was just gonna help film. It's one of those drive. things where he tore his shit and he couldn't walk for three days, and this was like a week before we. Were going to leave and I was like you know why don't we just start preparing now for you to film and then I'll drive because we didn't know if he was going to heal on time or not so you get in that it's mindset of I'm driving excuses. so really Billy was a dick and said I'm driving you filming no I that's what, that's what happened no, no, are you no. sure no he said are you sure you don't want to drive I said no man I just I want you to was you scared no I I Who mean he's a better driver oh, oh. Put me there. No, I seriously, I don't get, like, there is some streets that I get scared. I've seen a lot of crazy shit happen over the three years, four years I've been filming and stuff. But I feel the safest at the pad out of any other street in the whole fucking world. Like, the pad is safe, especially with BJ there. I know, you know, he likes to keep things safe and cordial, so. So you like BJ? Yeah, I love BJ. BJ's funny. Same with Limpy, too. He likes boys. Huh? He likes boys. <laughs> <laughs> To tell oh, oops. <laughs> um, no, that's that's understandable. It's a like it's a there's a whole there's a whole bunch of bullshit. Chief, excuses, Chief made but, fun of him. He said whenever there's a street race, he's the first one to run the camera back. What a pussy! <laughs> <laughs> Chief really said that. 
Oh yeah, Chief messed with me all the time. Tell him <laughs> but I, I, I was, I started shit with Chief. I'm always fucking. You got up time to put us to pay on. To pay. Tell him calm was calm over. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even met Chief in real life yet, though. Like, I just fucking mess with him every... I'll text him. I'll go... We'll, we'll go without testing, texting for, like, three months. And then, like, yesterday I messaged him, and he was talking shit to Billy, saying that he was going to gap my Ford Galaxy 500. He, call, he called it that. And all this shit. And so I messaged him. I was like, grab a lane. And then he fucking just started sending memes and shit. I don't know. He, he said, when I raced Joey, he said, him's data sensors was telling him to crash the fucking car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That motherfucker won't answer the phone or text me back, ever. But as soon as he sees on Facebook or something we race, I blow my phone up. I'm like, I know you see the fucking blue shit on set and you ain't even read the he's shit on, yet. I can attest that he's on a different schedule than everybody else. Yes. Yeah, 100%. When I was out there, he uh, he wakes up at like 5 in the afternoon or night, and then he's up till 4 in the morning. It was weird. Oh, no, that's the only time I really hear from him when we're filming or something. It's late or we're out racing somewhere. And it, he'll see it and be like, oh, we have to click it. Like, look at my, I don't have a watch, but look at my phone. I'm like, it's fucking 3 o'clock in the morning. Like, you ain't asleep. Yeah. He's not. He just, he's just a vampire. Yeah. So I have a kind of an interesting question. So, and this, you know, since we're talking about Chief. I do not so, find you attractive. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, since Chief has been off the show, oh, does it feel like there's a piece missing, like for everybody? Like I know you're not a, a 405 guy, but like, does it feel like there's a piece missing to the show compared to when he was on the show, like with him flagging and all kinds of stuff and being race master? Like, at at first, it was odd because normally you listen to him talking to drivers meeting, you listen to him lay the rules out, you watching him flag, you're watching, yeah. you know. If you go back to the beginning, that's where it started. Like, you know, he was race master. So at first it was a little different. It was getting used to. Um, Sean's doing a good job. Yeah, Sean's a good dude. Absolutely. You could tell, like, he don't really want the responsibility, but it got handed to him. Yeah. But he just took it and ran with it. Mm -hmm. um, he gets a little irate sometimes, but, like, so is Justin. Um, I've argued with both of them numerous times. I've argued probably everybody numerous times, except y'all yet. That's coming. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's different without him. The show just goes on. Yeah, though. I ain't got nobody calling me stupid last names or nothing like that like he did. But <laughs> some bitch been knowing me for 15 years, and he knows how to say my last name. He just he chooses not to. <laughs> he asked me how to say it earlier. What'd you tell him? I ask about every name though, because I don't want to go call in here and be like, "We got Bobby Ducati on here," and then you're like it's Ducati, and now I look like a motorcycle. Yeah, I'm not a motorcycle. You can't ride me, Tommy. So why are you blushing? I get uncomfortable. <laughs> I get you uncomfortable. <laughs> you want me to set my boxers real quick? He's not used to you yet. I'm not. If I put my box. Well, I feel like a tough guy like him. He looks at me. I'm holding a camera all the time. Probably some some nerd fucking camera guy. Like, <laughs> So, so would you feel uncomfortable just put everything with my socks and my boxers on and that was it? I don't know, man. I just, it's okay. Do whatever you want. You just got rid of <laughs> We're trying to get you a Coca-Cola sponsorship here. You <laughs> turn red. <laughs> next question. What's next for you? I'm off to like April or May. So I don't really know what's next. Um, I'm a little more street racing maybe? Oh, yeah, 100%. Real shit. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that, and I'm gonna spend some time on my boat. I'm gonna go fishing, um, hang out with the kids, um, a lot of lost time with the family. So yeah, I was home 34 days total this whole last year. Oh my gosh. So that's, yeah, that's crazy. <sighs> it's bad. There's, there's sometimes we drove 11 hours out of the way to be home for 10 hours just because we wanted to come home. You know, I mean, can you imagine? Oh, it's bad, man. Schedule's like, fucking they, grueling. They kept us really busy. Thankfully, they kept us busy. Um, you know, keep our sponsors happy. They keep us happy. So that's how it revolves. Um, sometimes not in the playing cars to come home. So you miss out on a lot of family time. Um, I left one time. My little girl, like, she was this tall. I got home and she was this tall. And, I said, and you know, she's already five going to 25. Thinks her shit don't stink. And she rules the fucking roost. Like, that's my boss. Yeah. And then I got my little boy. You know, he was this big when I left. I get home, he's this big. I'm like, 
bro, you're getting fatter and fatter every day like me, so I mean, what are we doing? You know? I, don't know, I got a lot of time left to do with stuff like that. Um, yeah, just yeah. take some time to spend it with family. Yeah, I got one more year, and shit's going to change a lot because my little boy really don't want to race, but my little girl is, like, dead set nuts on it. So in November, she's old enough to get a junior, and I think that's what we're going to start doing there you go. on our free time with junior drags are racing. That's where we started. Start them early. And she's five years old and done been four seventies down that highway in an orange car on big tires. That's pretty that's pretty rowdy. She uh <laughs> if I pull that car in here and crank it up, she'd come out of the house one way or another. She don't give a shit if she's in the middle of a bubble bath, she's coming. <laughs> and if you think you're gonna leave with that car and push out the highway up there, she ain't she is coming. She ain't gonna be in the golf cart, she ain't gonna be in the spark, she's gonna be in the car. She literally throwed a fit. I said, I gotta make a test so she goes, I'm coming. I said, No, you're not. That's awesome. She came. You never know, man. She might be, if the show keeps going on until she's of age to race one of the big cars, she could be on there. You know? I would shit. That'd be pretty cool. I would really shit. I mean, like I said, she's five. Yeah. I could pull that fucking car in here and pull the front end off of it and loosen the bolt to put a rocker arm off. She'll get that rocker arm off. <laughs> she knows to go in there and turn the power on, spin it over, make sure it's loose. That's cool. She'd take it off. Way smarter than I was when I was five. She ain't got spark plugs down there. Smarter yeah, than you when run. you were freaking 19. Yeah, no, yeah, honestly. I Your daddy know. said you couldn't check the valve latch. Is that true? Right now, no, I don't know how to do that. That's Are you shitting me? Teach me? You drive a car and you don't do the maintenance? So, That's an LS. Oh, yeah, yeah. fuck with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got okay. the shims. We shim it and torque it. It's good. That's it? Yep. See, Joe's Hydraulic roller. See. What the fuck? What? <laughs> it's fast, though. Yeah, man. I'm just fast enough. I mean, I'm not talking no shit here, but Tommy said you put that fucking small block four together, he fucked you up. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Is, don't shoot the messenger. A little trailblazer motor does pretty good for us sometimes. See, I'm doing it just for you. That's the beauty of street racing, though, right? I mean, you could race against your car, and we got a little stock LS motor, and we can line up, and it'll be close most of the time. You know, if we're on a, a street, like a real street. Yeah, His face says he didn't agree with what you just said. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for it. We were, we were paired I, together. I, I, I think it was going to be a good race. I have a feeling, and I'm not going to say this in a different way, but we're buddies, so we talk about what each other ran. Naturally, I should tear your ass up, but you was right there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it was going to be a fucking drag race. Were you, were you surprised? At what? When you saw him dragging? No, I knew no. he was fast, but yeah. I mean, if you was driving, I never thought it. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I'm just fucking with you. Don't get your panties in a wad. No, I don't get my panties in a wad. That motivates me. So you wear panties. <laughs> <laughs> He's quick. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I, there was something I was going to ask when we were talking about traveling and stuff. Obviously, I'm sure you like to be home, but like, do you have a favorite track or state to travel to or side of the country? You like, man, I like the East Coast. I mean, not that we're closer to it, but I I really like the East Coast. Um, I like a lot. I like Richmond. I like South Florida. Um, it's not open no more. Uh, West Palm Beach is gonna be shut down for good, which sucks. But that was my favorite track. Yeah. Being that the staff was so cool, man, the locals were cool. It's a smaller facility, and they pack you in there like a fucking can of sardines. But that was the coolest fans that we've ever met in our life. Right. And some of them don't even speak English. Like, 90% of them's Cuban. Hmm. And they come over there and go, do, 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 and you're like, huh? One more time. And they're, just, they're just cool. They're not, you know, you go to the West Coast, and some of the people there is assholes. Like, literally, like, if you don't talk to somebody over there, like, I had a head off my car in Arizona. He was like, come take a picture of me. I said, let me stick the head back on. I said, come fucking take a picture of me. And I'm like, hold on, motherfucker. Jeez. I hit you this fucking head real quick. Like, I'm not in the best <laughs> mood to begin with. I already hurt my shit, and you being an asshole. Um, then you got, you know, up north, like, uh, New Hampshire area. That's some weird people. <laughs> like, not weird in a bad way, but, like, they're just different. Yeah, I've never been to New Hampshire. Like, dude said, well, you talk funny. I said, motherfucker, you talk funny. 
<laughs> like, you know what I mean? We both talk funny to each other. Yeah. You know, I ain't from here, and you ain't from down there, so we naturally just, he's like, well, you know, okay. Everywhere I've been to, everybody's got a different accent. Oh, yeah. Wyoming? Ain't that where Joey's from? He's from Nebraska, ain't he? Nebraska. Okay, we're close enough. But we was up there, man, arguing with a dude at a gas station. Like, literally at a fucking gas station because they was pissed off that Mike Murillo and his Mexican family was there. Oh, yeah, you didn't hear about all that? No. Oh, they got jumped in the fucking motel parking lot and everything. For being Shit. Mexican? Yes. Straight up. Wyoming. Wyoming. So, that's white fuck- people? Yeah. Like, that's fucked up. So, we was arguing back and forth, and there's like 20 of us in the parking lot. And one dude said something about the dude's sister. Motherfucker got mad. And this ain't, I know it's gonna sound completely made up, but you can't make this shit up. Dude said something about his fucking sister or whatever. He said, Ain't nobody fucking my fucking sister but me. And that's what I said. We was like, What the no. fuck? Dude, I'm talking about if I had my phone out, oh, that'd have been one of them fucking 17 million view type shit right there. <laughs> so don't ever travel to Wyoming to race. I mean, they, they some good people up there, but they some weird motherfuckers up there. <laughs> then, I mean, we might be weird to them. I don't fucking know. Like, I'm not fucking my no, sister that's or nothing. Weird. That's fucking like. He was that vibe type shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, everybody's a cuck for their own shit. I mean, I guess we can relate more to East Coast is what I'm saying. Like, not necessarily talking bad about any other town or side of the map. But, you know, like, up there by y'all, like, it's different than here. You know, like, I go to I go to Marty's a good bit in Ohio. And people there ain't very, 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 very friendly. Yeah. Like, they look People at you, dicks. and like, I look like a Mexican. I get it, okay? I do. I'm not Mexican. I'm French and Italian. But motherfuckers think I'm a Whatever. And you don't really look regular white. I'm beige. <laughs> but, I mean, I did have a buddy one time. I was with a deaf girl. This is real shit. What was your rap name? Huh? Your rap name. Here we fucking go. Back you started this shit. You came at me, Bob. Back to, back to the back death up, girl. Back up. He had a story. Hold on. Back to the death girl. Damn, Damn. Bob is gone. Um. <laughs> no, he's red. Oh, I'll tell my rap name. First wave tells the story. I fucked up when I was younger. It's Bob Weezy. Bob Weezy. <laughs> um. Yo, yo, Bob Weezy. <laughs> yo, so he got me like I got you. Ain't that fucked up? We about yeah. to get Billy next. Yeah. So I'm not in the mood with comebacks. I'm just I'm so all bullshit. So I had this buddy. He dated this deaf girl, and he was sending us pictures of him. And I'm like, that motherfucker's bad. Like, wait a minute. Last time it was your deaf girl. Right? I ain't never had a deaf girl. Never. <laughs> never. There was never anybody. Who never. Knew this story never. Now you had a deaf girlfriend. Ever had a deaf girlfriend? Back there, you're talking about a small tire car, and now it's your buddy. Hey, it, it wasn't him, okay? It wasn't him. What? I'll tell you, it was Justin Poston. I'm not fucking bullshit. Yeah. It's a buddy of mine we call Bolo. His name's Justin Poston. This is real shit. You can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, this is way before he married you. We didn't even know who the fuck he was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna get out on Bobo for a minute. So, how old are you? 21. All right, we was younger than that. We was like 17, 18, like when the Blackberry was fucking cool. So, so like, he sent us picture on the BBM, like, that girl's fucking hot. He was like, good job. Man, he pulls up with her one night, and I'm like, there's no fucking way. And she got her fucking hair like this, so you can't really see her ears or things in it. Oh. <laughs> So then, like I walk up, I'm like, damn, Bubba, I see you got a white girl just joking. Like, he never dated no black girls, and he's a white boy, so I was picking with him, thinking she would laugh about it. I said, damn, Bubba, you got a white girl. I said, she's fine, too. He goes, this is so and so. I don't remember her fucking name. I want to say it was Tracy or Tristan or something like that. And uh, I went to shake her hand. She goes, hey, how you doing? I said, oh. Bro, I was like, I felt so fucking bad, like, like so bad. Like, she can't hear for nothing. We're going straight to hell right now. I don't care. This is it. We're, we're done. Like, straight to hell. Demonetized. She's still bad, though. She was. But she was deaf as fuck. <laughs> like, she like, you know, John language? I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was an asshole when I was, you know, oh, 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 17 oh, oh, and 20 ish range. Like, I didn't really care. And, man, we oh, give him so much hell, dude. Like, he left that girl. And we feel bad for it. it. Was like now she's like you see on social media she made like three four hundred thousand dollars a year, but she's doing good for oh. herself. Yeah, 
And yeah. she could hear now. Probably should have just got over the fact that she couldn't talk right. Well, she had a surgery probably 10 years ago to where she could hear now, right? And she went on live, and I, I commented, I was like, I said, damn, you can hear now, congratulations. Oh, this went the fuck off on me. Like, it was probably six, seven years ago. She told me, oh, you remember you picking on me because I was dead, bro? I was like, I said, I was just joking with you. But what? It mean nothing about it with you. Yeah. Oh, she was pissed. Like, pissed. She's perfect English for being done? Yeah. Not perfect, but I mean, it's borderline. It's like Taiwanese. <laughs> Crazy, you ain't never had no stupid shit when you was younger? Oh, oh for sure. Oh, he's still younger. Oh. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 26 now. Oh, look. You just, <laughs> fuck. He's a young one. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, it's came. It happens. This this podcast is about you, though. <laughs> I was just asking Billy <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right, what else you want me to know? What else you want to know about me? Since How'd about- you get started in racing? Yeah, we gotta uh, go there. Yeah, we gotta go back to the beginning. That's usually where um, we start. We skip that. So let's just take one out of seventeen. Yeah. All right, Joseph, come here. Come here. This is just part of you. Come here, motherfucker. Uh, okay. Bring you your you fucking can. old ass. Come here. Come here. Is he come in here. One? Uh, Joseph. I sit on a freaking saddle at Texas Roadhouse. You can bring this. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, I can share mine. The other one's not here. But this cocksucker and another one named Greg, like my pops nowadays, when I first moved up here, they had hot rods. So naturally it grabbed my attention. Um, I grew up in a racing family when we was in Louisiana. So loud cars and hot rods always grabbed my attention, like I said. So I was probably 12 or 13 years old and I would lie to them until I was 17, 18. And I would sneak out my mom and them's house next door and I'd walk down a road, meet them in the middle of the road, and I'd go street racing with them. And as time progressed, I was around a little more, and then, and it really asked why I never drove like to their house, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so when I was 15, I got my learner's permit, I had a little Ford Ranger, yeah. five speed, four cylinder, so I thought it was a shit. I had a name Danger Ranger and everything, it was lowered. Um, they go meet in town, I'd go and cut, cut donuts in the four way, act stupid, run from the police. Um, I was the, the young dumbass of the group. And as time went on, I guess we all got a little more comfortable around each other. And old Greg had the maroon Mustang with a, it was like a 421 trick flow high port headed deal. And it was fucking fast back then. Like that was a fast motherfucker. Yeah. Well, him and his wife had some issues. They split and got with the separate ways. He started hanging out with women on the weekends. And I'm like, well, of course, just fucking sitting there. So naturally, I took it. I didn't tell him shit. I just took the car, just took it. truck, trailer, and all that. No fucks given. Yeah, and this before Facebook and MySpace and all this. So they had a, a page called TorqueAddicts.net. You probably don't remember that. You probably do. You didn't, you know anything about that? No, he was on uh, what was it? DragRacerResults.com. Bracket Racers. This isn't about me, good. Yeah. Well, well, TorqueAddicts.net was a a platform everybody raced around. It's a forum. A forum that everybody raced around here on, like the southeast of the region. Kind of like, uh, was that Turbo? That Turbo Bullet now. Turbo Bullet, what it is now? Yeah. Well, man, I got on an argument with this dude, and I'm like, we don't live 30 minutes apart. What was his name? I had the blown S10 out of Carnes. Oh, uh, I don't know, was it Roger? No, it wasn't Roger. Anyway, he had an S10. Um, I had a small block with like a 1071 on it or some shit. And I said, I'll tear your ass up. And he was like, well, lock the fuck in. Well, keep in mind, I'm probably 16 or 17 years old. I didn't have a whole lot of money. So we logged in like 300 bucks. I thought that was a lot of money. He did. So naturally, I started just dogging the shit out of him until he said, all right. So we met halfway. I unloaded the car. Just paid our little money as one little dude. I dumb and burn out. I backed up. Greg opened the door. I said, oh, that's some car. <laughs> like, straight car. Oh, shit. He said, what in the fuck are you doing in the car? And the key, uh, cranked on a key. He reached in there, turned on He said, what in the fuck are you doing? <clears throat> you got to know Greg know how he talks. He, well, he got Tourette's. 
I, I don't know. I don't know. He's, he's, got, he's got something. Do something with this fuck. <laughs> Come here. Bring your fucking ass here. Come here. Come here. Bring it. Come here. For people listening. Oh, Bobby's dog, dog legend. He's okay, working. Okay, but working. people, my, people my listening. My dog was having extracurricular activities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he likes New Yorkers, huh? Yeah. He definitely liked the girls, but he went out and thought of the shirt. This motherfucker is yeah. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so he, 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 he turns the car off. He turns the car off and he said, Get the fuck out the car. He, he mad as a motherfucker. I said, oh, I'm going to get my ass off. He said, how long have you been fucking doing this? That's six months. He goes, and the dude that I was racing called him because he knew I was talking shit about his car, so he kind of set me up, right? Yeah. So we out there, he said, I told you, Mr. Greg. He was out here and he was going to do that with your car. He said, I told you. He said, shut the fuck up. I said, oh, I said, we're both going to get in trouble. <laughs> so I'm, I'm listening. I am. It's about to get bad. He goes, you been doing this for six fucking months? I said, yes, sir. He said, I don't know my fucking tires. My nitrous and shit been going. I'm like, yeah. Dude, I'm like getting my ass chewed like bad. Yeah, you stole this dude's car. Yeah. And then the dude that I was racing, he's like, he said, I knew it. he's laughing like a motherfucker. He said, didn't you lock a fucking race in? And he said, well, yeah. He said, get in the fucking truck. I said, oh, I said, Greg's going to race it. He said, if we going to do this, he said, get in the motherfucking car. He said, I'll see you when you get back. That's the last time Greg drove that car. I drove it from then on back. But I got my first reality check. <laughs> I beat him. I got my money. And I was like, and Greg went, I said, oh, I said, what the hell? He said, you owe me this for this many tires, this much nitrous. He said, I have no problem with you driving this motherfucker. He said, but you're going to pay for it. You, did you even have a job at the time? No. Yeah, he didn't even have a job. That's crazy. <laughs> you were like 16. Yep. Yeah. And we're talking about a car went 560, 570 back then on Virgin Blacktop. Yeah. Was it still a five speed then too? This is like early 2000s. It was still at the glide then? 06. 06. 05. It's on that range. Add the power glide. It, it run 620s with an actual like TKO what, 600. I'm not sure. Hey, is it Fox body? Yeah. Four maybe lug, so. like half inch studs, nothing fucking crazy. Um, no cage. Um, we may have some clips of that car and you in it at like yeah, Top City or something. That, that I got some pictures and videos of it on, on the street and on the track, stuff like that yeah. way back when. And that's kind of how I got started with it. And then, you know, Greg's never been out ran on the street. So naturally everybody around here called him Legend. And I, I talked shit to him a couple of times, but it, it, he, he's never been out ran on the street. And like, that's where he got the name from. And when I started driving the car, everybody started calling me Little Legend. So. That's kind of where that homosexual name kind of stuck. I don't really like it, but it is what it is. Um, I take it wrong with it. That's where it came from. And, yeah. and, uh, and just that's cool. To I clarify, never knew that. I always wondered. Uh, any race that he set up outside of this area, he had never been beat. I beat him several times. Really? Yeah. You beat old fat boy. Yeah. You know it's gonna be In both camera. cars. I don't care. I took <laughs> great. I probably got some videos somewhere. Really? Probably. I have to find them. Yeah. I remember that, that old car, man. It would leave. We went out on a highway one night. Y'all, race John Clay or one of John Clay's buddies. It was fucking drizzling. When I say drizzling, I mean like the road had it. You could see the gleam, like the, from the, where it was wet. Yeah. I said, y'all the folks really gonna race? He said, you fucking right, we're gonna race. They, they had a five speed. We didn't do a burnout in the five speed. It just fucking just annihilated the fucking tire. Dude, when they flagged the race, old Rick, he flagged and ran across the road like a dumbass. When Greg <laughs> let off the clutch, that motherfucker was up on the back tires, and when it come down, it bounced. He snatched second, that motherfucker went up again and almost took Rick the fuck out. Like, the great old country boy, that's somebody to snatch a shift out of one. Mm -hmm. Like, shifts, it yeah. sounded like automatic. He said that, it was a TKO 600, he sent the Liberty. You didn't have the clutch, you just grab it. So he just, it wah, bah, 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 bah. I think he probably had Tony B. I got a friend like that too. I think he had Tony B. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we used to try to fuck him up back in the day. We could never get in touch with him. It would just pop. When he hit the limit, it just pop. He's listening. He, 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 he actually <laughs> 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 
that, that, that six shift stuff gets him all excited. Right and he there. can he's still chubbed up right like now. He's chubbed. You, you don't you don't remember back in the day a maroon fox body from around here we used to make memes about AV boys or pussies and all this shit. You guys calling us a boy band and shit? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Much love. That's like 15 years ago. <laughs> yep, it's like, matter of fact, we're going to the first picture of the scene. Yeah. Somebody was in that picture. Tess? Yep. Oh, yeah. That's we just try to get on from that. Like, we just never, I didn't know how to link up with anybody. It wasn't no Facebook or, you know, right. shit. They had MySpace. And, I think Facebook was just starting to come around back then, so. Yeah, they did. I wish they would have started YouTube channels back then, like really got with it. Oh, yeah, no shit. Now sure. it would be insane. We but. actually, when was it? Oh, oh, 04? A bunch of us down here went to Detroit and run some boys up there. And somehow or another, Brian got in touch with Pete. And we was going, like this way before Sherlock Laws ever was even fucking thought of. So none of us really knew how to way to contact each other. Right. We were just going up here saying this guy, this guy, this guy. And uh, we was trying to run. Murph, uh, Murph had a Camaro back in the day. We was gonna try to run him up there. And we just never really got around to it. Um, but that's how it all really started. New York, started. Murph. Yeah. Really. Like that's that's how we all kind of got started. Like he was just a kid back then. Yeah. So he was older. You I was watching that grip. Yeah. I mean, once it. YouTube came around, I started watching you guys, and that's what got me into it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was watching you and Peter Baum and everything out in Texas and Oklahoma. And, and I'll say this: like I, I've been knowing like Chief and Sean and them since Chief had a nitrous car. That tells you anything. Been a long. That's time. a long fucking time. He was on twenty nines and a plate. And I remember watching Sean, we had the, the blow through carburetor deal. And man, like, I'm sorry, Merton had a fucking plate on it way back when. Really? Way back Before when. Before the Pro Charger? Yeah, way back when. We went up there in 05, no, 03, with a chassis car that had these little uh, street races in a fucking city. Um, it wasn't Hawthorne, it was some other town. That, they shut the road down, let us race on it. And we all went up there, man, and it was bro, my uncle's car, a chassis car. And they all cried about that motherfucker. Oh, it's a pro mod, it's a pro mod. Nobody raced the show on the street, but really not honestly, like Daryl Jerry Bird. I remember being 12 years old and holding $100,000 in my hand, Daryl Jerry racing that pro on the fucking highway. And like, that was a, a big deal back then. I mean, that's what's a big deal today. I mean, that's a lot of money, Fuck especially right. from back then, yeah, too. Yeah, no shit. Like, like, you think about something, that's 22 years ago. And, man, like, they always say, oh, y'all fake and this and that. But, like, really, Jerry was king dingling for fucking years. Like, when I say years, I mean, like, motherfucker was fast back then. He's fast now. He's yeah. old as fuck, but, I mean, he's still fast. He's about it. How he ended up getting that good-looking wife of his? How bad it Man, I think she felt sorry for him. Because, <laughs> you know, she, Aunt Kelly said one time, she was like, man, you know, Jerry's just so ugly. I'll play. I'll tell you exactly how they got together. Right. And, and uh, man, Kelly, I'm sorry. Put your business out there, bro. You know, this ain't really bad, but I think it's cute. So, she was with a guy that was kind of abusive. And Jerry was kind of your younger badass. So, how do you think that happened? Yeah. Well, if I go, took yeah, if I start talking to this guy, and she'll tell you, she said, I started talking to him, so he beat him up. She said, that's it. She said, then I liked him and fell in love with him. So, then they had a family. Like oh, he's a cool dude. I love both. I wish he'd do some small tire stuff with us. Man, he was supposed to, like, but he's got a small tire car there. He ain't supposed to say nothing, but he does. And he's been on the road with a little bit. Thing got tied up with some family stuff, yeah. four cash days, or pad wars. Um, Cause he was gonna come out there and he didn't even make it come help, like come watch or hang out or nothing. Um, but I do know that they had the Mustang ready to rock. Like it was, shit happened. Um, Craig and Danny Bashar was supposed to come. Scott was actually gonna be there too. Yeah, like Scott was coming. Yeah. Putting his, Scott, Scott does some real shit every once in a while. Um, he ended up having to put his car on it. We I remember were, the first time I came to the pad, Scott was there with John Doe. Yeah. We was all going to come. And uh, 
they put Kai's new car on a ship, Scott's John Doe on a ship, so they didn't really have no small tire cars to come play with. Yeah. So Scott went on vacation, Kai went hunting. I ain't going either, so I just fucking come race. I don't know if you want to speak on it or not, but what do you think of the whole Kai and Kai, you know, Lizzie's dad thing? Oof. What, do you, what do you make of that deal? All right. <laughs> we'll go Be careful. Yeah. Be careful now. <laughs> There's a lot of opinions out there. And I, I like Pat as a person. I like Pat as a friend. Pat is no team member. Mm-hmm. Pat is out for himself and himself only. He don't give a fuck about nobody else. My new car was originally a 959 deal. It was literally ready to rock. Motor in it, headers built, car wired. It, we'd have had it out a whole lot earlier. We're supposed to be a team, right? No matter what. Jerry has a Musi motor that Charlie Buck did some work on. Charlie helps Jerry now. They they dealt with each other for many years. So naturally, they're friends. He helps Jerry. Pat didn't like that. And I'm gonna be honest with you, if you had a buddy that was building your motors and not really like he was helping you out, not kicking you in the dick. Like some people would, where are you gonna go? You gonna go, 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 go with your buddy, right? Okay. Let me just stop. Thank you, good. Um. So, Jerry hurt the motor at whatever race we was at, and he said I need a set of rings. The guy said I don't have any. He said I know Pat does. This is on a Friday. Jerry bought a fucking plane ticket. Saturday red eye, Saturday morning, to have rings brung, flew from Total Seal there to the track. He, he went to Pat Friday night. He said, can I get a set of rings and I'll give you a set when they get here the next day so I can put it back together tonight. He said, fuck, man, I walked off. So at that moment, I was like, I said, man, I'm not going to stop using Mike for nobody. Like, Mike's a good fucking dude. He got, he's done my motors for a long time. I'm not going to risk this. I'm not going to be fucked around. Yeah, I mean, you're in competition with them. What if you need something? Right. Um, a team member would have understood their deal. A team member would have helped. Um, that's not a team member. But like I said, I like Pat as a person. I don't like him as a race team a race team member. Right. Um, he's helped me some. Um, I've heard shit. And, you know, he's fixed my head for me. Um, he didn't do nothing for it. and didn't something free. Um, he let me use the shop. I'm not going to say anything bad about him, but, you know, he's helped me get parts. But that right there just kind of did it for me in a whole aspect. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Kind of confirmed everything. Yeah, and then I noticed other things as time went on. Like, there's videos all over Facebook right now talk about Kai going to a screw blown Hemi. That's true. He's gone to a screw blower. Why? Because Pat does him the same way, and that's supposed to be a son in law. Right. Okay, now, this is a, another big thing about it, and I don't really care if I piss him off or not, but I'm going to say what I feel like is right, and I feel like this is the truth. There's no use in running somebody's shit if you're not able to buy the same shit they're going to race against you. Makes sense. So, if you go and say, they take the motor out of the car, boom. And I walk up and say, I'm giving, I know this motor needs to be freshened. I want to pay you a brand new fucking motor for the one you just pulled out that's wore out. And get told no. It was the same shit, you jump all over that, right? Yeah. Definitely. So there, there's no sense in doing it. But. In the same aspect, everybody does it. Yeah, I bought two motors from Proline. Mike's going to freshen them. They're not mad about it. I told them that before I even did anything. I said, look, I get it. This is y'all's deal. It's got y'all valve coverage, y'all intake. I'm loyal to my guy. He's with me from day one. If we had time for him to order everything and put it together himself, that's what we'd have did. But I sold the 959 and I bought these. 
knows what I just, so you notice what I just said? I sold the 959 and bought these. Not everybody got there spent $150,000 on one fucking motor. Like, that's ridiculous. It's insane. It takes the same amount of billet to make all that shit. Because they're all within a deal. You know what I mean? It's like condoms. They ain't different prices for different sizes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just the truth, man. You can't, if you ain't able to buy what the next person's got, what's the point of doing it? Yeah. You know? Do you think, uh, do you think Kai should have just turned his car up and just not worried about and just ran his own oh, race? Okay, so you won't go on that though. Okay, my yeah. bad. I went off track there. No, you're good. You're good. I'm going to go back on that track. Uh, I think that fucked him. You think Honestly, he, he, he really right. told him he that he was going to turn it down. I, I was standing in the fucking staging lanes. He said, we ain't got nothing for you. He's like, we're not going to go out there blazing it. He said, just race your race. Yeah, because what they showed on TV was, he said, I think I believe he said, we're just going to, he said, just run your own race. But he was like, uh, I think he said something to the effect of, like they're not sure what it's going to do. They're not sure if it, it might make a good pass. It might not. No, he, he told him, he said, we ain't got nothing for you. We're having trouble. Pretty much we're going to let you go. But they also come back and say, nobody's ever helped them. You know how many times I race my fucking way in? Knowing I ain't got a shot at the fucking championship? Hey, listen, you do. Go get them. I got there running on a motor. Or I leave her the red light. Or I let her tear the fuck out before I tear off. I've done the same thing with her, done the same thing with Kai. Um, Kai appreciates it though. But yeah. there's a difference. Like if me and him was racing and I knew that mine was, you know, he had a better chance at winning the whole deal or Definitely a championship or something. You would call your brother out and let him go. Yeah, I would, I would either call him out and let him go. If we paired with each other, I would make sure I lost. And he would be thankful for that. Yeah. It wasn't Absolutely. like that with Lucy. Man. Like, but at the same time, if both of our cars are running good, I, we race, this, this I, for would, instance, I would race it out. This, for instance, if he was within 10 points of the championship, two last races of the year, and you drew each other, you had no chance of winning. You Absolutely. Would, no question asked, you would let him fucking go. Absolutely would have let him go. And that's your brother. Yeah. Not your husband. Correct. <laughs> or the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that just puts Lizzie in a bad situation, it too. It does. Because as bad as she wanted to help him, she knew if she did, she'd lose her whole operation. And that's what she's going for now is to get her own operation. Because Lizzie actually wants to be a team player. She's not sure how to be because she don't know how to be. But she wants to be. So, therefore, she's got a little bit of learning curve to do. She's not... I'm not gonna talk bad about her and say she's a preppy bitch because she's not. She was when we first met her, but we kind of like molding her in. Of yeah. course, she's like one of the guys. Right. Now, we used to be able to pick on her, she'd get mad as fuck. <laughs> like, she'd get so mad. And she's now we pick on her, she kind of. She's lighting up. She's lighting up, she'll pick back, fuck you, Bobby, or throw the water at me or something. But like, <laughs> she's starting to get the hang of things. Like, it's been imprinted in her mind to. Win, 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 win. Fuck everybody else. But now that she's part of a team, and her other half is part of a team, she's making a transition. Yeah. That, I think there needs to be a good balance. You know, you got to be respectful. You got to be. I mean, it's there's nothing wrong with wanting to win. Right. You know what I mean? But there comes a point when you say like, "What's it worth?" Oh yeah, like. Dude, we, we blowed mine smooth the fuck up in the last year or year before last to give Kai a run for the first the first go. And man, he even like he told me he was like, if I win this motherfucker, he said, I'm gonna break you off. He said, I appreciate it. I said, I ain't worried about it. I said, I'm gonna see you win. Like, I can't go out there and I run anybody. I got two dead holes. So I'm doing my part as a team. I'm gonna crank this motherfucker up, huffing fucking smoke. And I'm an idolist bitch, 100 foot, and knock and kill it and fucking coast off the track, load my shit up and go home. You go win the fucking championship. But it's like clockwork. Every time I give him a free round, he fucks up next round. <laughs> not saying it's, it's, 
Yeah. His fault, he ain't like his fault, that's how his luck draws. Like that boy's got the worst fuck. I thought I had shit ass luck. That boy's got some fucking bad luck. But at the same point in time, it's hard for one of us to do that because just off top at No Prep Kings, it's gonna cost you ten thousand dollars that weekend. Just off top, between traveling, food, expenses. Not counting if you hurt anything, shove anything in the wall, or somebody gonna hit you or something. Just off top. It's hard to swallow ten thousand knowing that you're not gonna go out there and have a chance to win the money because you're giving to this one. T-shirts. Yeah, and you're not gonna sell a bunch of fucking t-shirts unless you're Ryan Martin, Daddy Dave, Murder Nova. Uh, Jeff. No. Um, Lizzie, that's your biggest, your biggest deals. I mean, you're only gonna do what you're shown and allowed to do, you know what I'm saying? Right. So. MPK is cool. Like, I'm going to have a little more fun this year, being that I have a car that I can't compete with. Um, I just hope it's a little funner. Like, it's been a rough couple of years. Right. Um, it's rough. I mean, it sucks leaving the of... house knowing you ain't got the car to outrun them motherfuckers. We still go out there and try it, you know? So. It's hard to compete with the Ryan Martins. You know? Hell yeah, man. Like, they got, uh, they got a team. Oh, like, it, it, really it's cool. hard. When you go out there and spend every dollar you got, it's gonna be like, damn. And he comes behind you and goes, check me. Yeah. You just can't compete with them. And that's why I think, you know, the MPK stuff is great and all, but it's kind of got away from what it started as. Oh, fucking right. Bad, dude. I mean, it's pretty much, it's pretty much a modern day pro mod. Everybody's like, well, Ryan always wins because he can test every day. Go test every day. I'm like, you think that shit's free? Like you look at a thirty-five hundred dollar track run, off top, fuel expenses, crew, tuners, like the shit adds up. So I can't spend five thousand dollars a day to go out there and fucking make laps and put a set of rods and pistons in it every couple of days. There's no fucking way. Some people can. I'm not hating on it for it, yeah. but that's why. He does what he does and can just run over everybody because he has unlimited data. I wouldn't say unlimited funds, but he's got a lot of funds. And I mean, the boy puts the work in. Yeah, so, he's a, he's definitely a hard worker. No well, doubt he about works that. his ass off. I will say, I will be the first to say, like, I fuck with him and call him quick all the time. Tell him he's gay and he's, he's ugly and slow. But at the end of the day, Ryan works his fucking ass off. If all of us could afford to do the same thing, we would too. But I mean, like I said, money don't grow on trees. Right. You know. Well, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure glad to see the show going the direction it's going now with more small tire stuff and more daily stuff. So yeah, I compete with that shit. Yeah. We put they fuck around, put small on these motherfucker game all the time. <laughs> yeah, That's all I can tell them. Yeah, yeah. You gonna you gonna try to come do any of it if it goes small tire on the track stuff? On the track uh, stuff? Yeah. Uh, nah, maybe. I don't. I don't know. The problem with us is is. Like, if, like we gotta make content. So yeah, let's if they say won't we let us film it. Then let's say we would have went to Mega kind of Cash Days. Our, our YouTube channel shuts down for three weeks, and we post at a minimum once every three, once once every week. So that's like our fans are just hanging there, or everybody that watches. I mean, you can there. make behind the scenes footage and all that, but how many people are gonna stick around and watch you just bullshit in the trailer and not show any racing? We get more views off of that than we do the fucking racing, believe it or not. Well, I believe it with you. Man, we, we, I mean, you gotta act stupid sometimes. Right? <laughs> Light your brother on fire or something. Read <laughs> <laughs> <Well>, that. <laughs> well, no, I miss, it's fun, man. It's, it's a whole different. It's a whole different animal. But if you come do stuff like that, you gotta find some make content with. You go there, everybody's hanging out partying. Hey, which one you want to actually race on a real road? Yeah. And then while everybody else is filming over there. there you take somebody off set and make your content. It's true. As we try to do with Hacker, but some of them you can't pry off fucking, I don't want to raise on that road. Hangs you nuts, bro. Let's go. Yeah. You know? Well, you never know. We we did some of the, the MPK locals only stuff this year. And I did, think so. We did pretty good on there. So. My seniors are riding wheelies and shit. Yeah. But Tommy did really well. I think there's going to be some good stuff in there. We all did really well. 
they, team they, ever. They knew I'd run you, brother, one time. Uh, I mean, many times. During a medium but, time. <laughs> I think our win record back and forth for the well, trout are much even. Nah, uh, I got him by like two races, I think. It's like seven five. No, I, like, I tuned both cars, so. I, I, right. I'm to the point now where I understand, you know, the holly. I, I could put a tune-up in that car, but I'm always going to run it by him before it's actually, you know, click save. But I, I can understand. If I see a big dip in the graph, I'm like, but he's never, he doesn't do that. We, you know, it's not what we do, so. I turn every car up as fast as I think the lane will hold yeah. and let the best driver win. That's fair. Right. Did you leave him the fuck alone? <laughs> Did he ever answer who he thought the best driver was? Did we get that out of him? Uh, who do y'all think? I think he has a better reaction time. However, every time we've raced, I've, I've treated him. But he's the only person I can treat, even though he's crazy on the light. But uh, I wouldn't say you treat me every time. Thornhill, go look at the video. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I think he's... Here's, here's what I think. I think as long as you're in an environment where you're comfortable, you're great. But if you put you in an environment where there's a lot of people and you're on the street and you can't see shit and you got a lot of variables going on, you got cops and everything, I think that's where I'm, I'm best at. Yeah. Because you come up on the Yeah. They're gonna say I'm soft. Oh, <laughs> they say just, I'm soft. You the oh, baby. <laughs> oh, so oh, they're saying. When the, I I do better under pressure. He's he's done some. He's done far more crazier shit than I've ever had. Like he had to do that crazy shit because he didn't have anything to lose back then. You know, like. How old are you? Twenty one. And you're twenty six. Do you think you could compete with him when you was twenty one? No. I don't think so. Yeah, that's there's a good question. Answer. So he's just farther ahead than me. But then there's your answer. Yeah. yeah. Well, he asked, was a better driver. He's 26. He's probably going to be better than I was at 26. Maybe. That's the variable you got to look at. You can't say who's a better driver now. You got to look at it when you was that age. Mm -hmm. Do you think, how would you stack up against him when you was that age? Versus when he's 26, how do you think you're going to be able to stack up with him when you're 26? Yeah, because when I was 21, Cause all I you're doing going as fast as like he is now. Like your dad just said, all you're doing is paving the way for your brother. So everything you're learning, you're teaching him. And instead of him learning the hard way, he's getting the path up. So you're setting him up and you're putting yourself down for failure. Because that means he's going to fuck you up. On <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Well, I got to know that's got a big block. So for now, he's just going to have to... Drive it a little turbo. Buddy, you just seen what a big block can do against a lot less. Yeah, I good. know, I know, I know. But what you gotta do, you little brother, sometimes you gotta just put him under your wing. <laughs> hey, I got one I tried, he just don't listen. Fucking ain't got there fucking go coffee work go well. Well, I think we've been on here long enough. We've used up enough of your time, Bobby. We appreciate you for your time. Yes, sir. Yeah, we gotta get back to Ohio. Yeah. Yes, sir. Time to go home and start editing a bunch of footage. Yeah, there will be some bloopers in this motherfucker. <laughs> we thank you uh, for doing this, man. Yeah, we're good.